I wanted to bring today's episode to the podcast. It is day number two in our series, giving you actionable steps you can implement right now. Today's topic is sleep. We see so many issues with sleep that people that are really focused on that diagnosis, whether it's a low AMH, high FSH, POI, DOR, unexplained infertility, really, we get stuck on that diagnosis. And many times we've got sleep issues like we're talking about today, which is a huge clue that something is off in your body. Sleep is the cornerstone for good health and to to optimize your fertility. So talking about strategies you can implement right now. So this is all about you taking actions. Excited for you to listen. If you've got issues with your sleep, even if you don't have issues with your sleep, there's ways to even optimize it further for you to listen. So excited to have you listen to today's episode. Hey there, I regularly speak with five to 10 couples per week who are struggling to have their baby. And although we want to help everyone, we only have two spots available per month to work with us. So the Supercharger Fertility Discovery Call is for action takers and really people who are ready to move forward so they can finally have their baby. And if you're not ready and you wait, the risk is you'll need to wait two to three months for a spot to open up. So if you're seriously considering working with us, go to fabfertile, F-A-B, fertile.com and click on book a free call. Then you'll be all booked in and ready to spend 30 minutes to give you the action plan to getting pregnant naturally. That's fabfertile, F-A-B, fertile.com and click on book a free call. Hey there, thanks so much for listening to the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast. And I've got a favor to ask you if you are enjoying learning about the functional approach to fertility, consider going to iTunes and rating and reviewing the podcast. This is how it helps the show reach more people that are struggling with infertility, knowing that there's another approach that really can get to the bottom of why it's not working in the first place. So all you need to do is if you're on the app or the desktop, just go in and consider leaving a five-star rating and leave a review. And there is step-by-step instructions in the show notes showing you exactly how to do that. So if you can just take a few minutes, just take a few minutes right now, you can pause this this recording, come back, leave the review. It would really mean the world to me and help others that are on the fertility journey as well. Take care. One theme that keeps coming up with the couples in our Fat Fertile Couples Coaching Program is sleep. Whether it's insomnia, having a hard time falling asleep, waking up at night or feeling tired when we wake up, sleep is critical for fertility and hormones. And that's why I'm so excited to have Blue Blocks as our podcast sponsor. So we're exposed to blue and green light from our phones, our tablets, our computers, indoor lights, and more. And this exposure impacts our melatonin production. Melatonin is essential for both female and male fertility. It helps determine the frequency and duration of our cycle and impacts sperm. There's lots of blue light blocking glasses on the market, but the ones from Blue Blocks, they've actually compared other popular brands and Blue Blocks block 100% of blue and green light while other brands fall short. So I have their sleep glasses. They have red lenses and the ones I have are a little translucent uh, frame and they're so stylish and really cool. And so they eliminate 100% of the blue and green light in the 400 nanometer to 550 nanometer range. So this is exact range has been shown in clinical studies to disrupt melatonin and negatively impact your sleep. So all you do is wear your sleep glasses after sunset until it's time for bed and you'll notice improved sleep after just one use. And it's also cool to use when you're flying for managing jet lag. So I got to say, I was a little skeptical about the noticing uh, improvement after one use, but literally I I use these glasses and my sleep is actually already pretty good. I used them for one day. And I have to say, after one day, I had the best sleep of my life. I just felt so rested. So these glasses, they ship free and they're tracked for all orders anywhere in the world. And also they have all their frames come in prescription, non-prescription and reading glasses. Plus you can send in your frames and they'll add the blue light blocking and green light blocking lenses to your frame. So this is an easy hack that you can add to your fertility toolkit. All you do is go to blue blocks, B-L-U-B lox.com use the coupon code get pregnant podcast at checkout and receive a 15% discount that's blue blocks b l u b l o x.com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast to receive your 15% discount i didn't need to go to donor eggs obviously mm-hmm. i don't regret it i have beautiful children i could have done things differently restored i was still cycling back in my in my 20s I could have looked at my health, the environmental toxins, the stress I was under. Many, many women are being told their eggs are too old. That's often merely an assumption that's not based on actual evidence. The reason being that there is no direct test of egg quality. You can't test egg quality. 
It's the man who's got a food sensitivity or he has a zinc deficiency. Like there can be a root cause to these symptoms that are, you know, quote unquote, period problems that the doctor will pass you a pill without any question of why. And some part of you knows that if you can reframe your journey from not one of struggle, or if it is struggle, learn how to embrace the struggle. Learn how to embrace it. Most conditions in the child occur during the nine months of development. It's the, the genetic switches are turned on or turned off and they're pre-programmed. So you are in such a powerful, amazing position to do amazing things for your kids. You know, why is IVF the first step? Because we believe it should be the last step. Welcome to Get Pregnant Naturally, where functional medicine and natural fertility solutions will help you get pregnant and have your baby. Hey there, I'm Sarah Clark, founder of Fab Fertile and your host. I believe the functional approach is the first step for anyone struggling with infertility. My aim is to help you get pregnant naturally. Today, I'm welcoming Justine Altman back to the podcast and we're digging into why sleep matters if you are trying to conceive. And this episode is part of our series and it is all about action. So sleep is the cornerstone of good health and critical to ensure that you have optimal fertility. So listen carefully, pick one action item that you can implement today. And Justine is, is part of my team here at Fab Fertile, and she's an integral part of our couples coaching program, which uses functional lab testing, diet and lifestyle changes to dramatically improve conception. So if you're struggling with infertility, your body's desperately trying to tell you something. Focusing on your health will either help you get pregnant naturally or if you do need to go to the fertility clinic, it will improve your chances of success. Justine is a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. She was diagnosed with PCOS and struggled with infertility. And she had her first baby with fertility treatments. But after taking a functional approach, was able to conceive her second child naturally. And as always, thank you so much for listening. I'm really so thankful that you're here. Make sure you hit subscribe. And if you know someone else who is on the fertility journey, please share this podcast with them. Hey, Justine, excited for day number two of our series. And today we're digging into sleep. Another one of our, we seem to have a lot of favorite, oh, I have a lot of favorite um, subjects. I think this is one of your favorite ones too, but <laughs> I know it was diet, but sleep, sleep is so important. This is something for me that I've, I've never really had issues with sleep. I don't like to say that out loud because, you know, who knows what could happen, but it, it is uh, something I haven't struggled with. But we we regularly see with the couples we work with that people's sleep are, it's either they can't fall asleep, it's dysregulated, it's interrupted, they wake up tired in the morning, they're exhausted, you know, throughout the day because they're not getting enough sleep. Optimizing your sleep, again, is one of those things that can really move the needle quickly for you when you when you dig into the, to the sleep piece. So let's just talk about, well, why does it matter for fertility? Yeah. Uh, you know, so sleep, um, it's just so important. Like one of the most, I would say, you know, if we had to rank things, I would say uh, sleep and diet are like nearly tied basically for the things that have to sort of be in order, in order for people to really sort of to, to feel their best. Not getting the right sleep, just it's it's this constant stress on the body. You know, there are things that happen during the night that happen during different phases of sleep that just simply can't happen if we don't sleep long enough and if we don't sleep deeply enough, right? And so it's important that, you know, the as the body goes through the phases, through the REM phase and the deep sleep phase and all of those things, that different things are happening and at different parts of the sunlight schedule. So basically, you know, we're talking about circadian rhythm, you know, so, so whatever two, you know, one to 3 a.m. ish your time is, is in Chinese medicine referred to as liver time. And it's also when we know blood sugar tends to drop for people that have some blood sugar irregularity, right? And so we, it's really important that, that we get sleep during that phase. And so that's one of the clues that comes up from people a lot of times is if, if there's waking a lot during that specific time of the night, that it's usually indicative of something going on with one of those two things. But that just sort of goes to show us that it's really important that we're sleeping at that time of night and that it really matters that we're in a good deep sleep by the time that time of night rolls around in order for the liver to do all of its important work, which it absolutely cannot do if we're awake. Um, and similarly, the digestive system has other processes too, that it can only do when we've been fasted for so long and when the body's at rest. And so if the body's not getting proper rest, the digestive tract just can't do that. And again, like we've talked about in other in other parts of the series, right? We've, we've got, if the digestive system isn't doing everything that it's supposed to be doing at 100%, then our, our the resources our body has to work with to power everything that it's doing are really limited, right? And so it's really important 
that the digestive tract has the ability to sort of do all this clearing and cleaning out and, and all, all the other things that it's doing during the night in order to prepare you for the next day. And so in order to do that, you have to be getting the right quality and quantity of sleep. Absolutely. And dysregulated sleep can then impact the blood sugar the entire next day, which then is creating an imbalance with estrogen, which increases cortisol and adrenaline and, to, and depletes uh, progesterone. So it's all this this domino effect and digging into sleep is a huge, a huge thing to, to focus on. You can start to see improvements. Absolutely. And so the number one thing is to get to bed by 10 p.m. So can, Justine, can you talk about the importance of sleep between 10 and 12? Yeah. You know, so the thing that I always tell clients is that we, the sleep that we get before midnight, every hour we get before midnight is worth roughly twice as much as any hour we get after midnight. Part of that has to do with, again, you know, we are, we're, we are a diurnal species, right? So as a species wide, we are meant to be awake when it's light out and asleep when it's dark out. And any variation from that is less useful to our bodies. And so, um, you know, I hear a lot of arguments uh, against this, right? Like I've never been a morning person or I always work best late at night. Um, and ultimately when that, when I hear that, um, I hear you and I absolutely believe that that's your experience, but ultimately it does tell me that something is not quite right with the circadian rhythm, that something is, is sort of off with that balance. Um, and that if we changed, you know, if we altered your chemistry a bit and we got your body sort of humming along in the right way that you'd become a morning person and you would sort of wake up around, around, uh, sunrise, um, and become tired when it was, you know, sort of traditional bedtime. But it's, it's this goofy thing that we, we don't think about, especially in our younger adult years, right? In our twenties and thirties and, and life is going on. And, um, you know, you, you're in that phase of life where parties start at 9 PM or 10 PM or 11 PM, you know? And so we just sort of get used to having this sort of later schedule. Um, and what we don't realize though, is that just because we're adults doesn't mean that we don't, that we shouldn't still sort of stick to the principles that we set for children. And it's because those same principles really apply to us too. And so, you know, we think we're grown ups and we don't need a bedtime, but come to find out a bedtime and a bedtime routine and a whole, you know, the whole shebang of, you know, setting a bedtime, you know, having a, a very sort of specific set of things that you do before bed that sort of gears your body up, tells your body that it's, that it's time for us to start winding down. It's time for us to, to start relaxing and to be okay to drift off into sleep, that those things are important for the grown ups too, just as much as they are for kids. Absolutely. And if you or your partner are snoring, we like the app snore lab. And uh, if you're snoring, that's impacting your cardiovascular vascular system, a whole bunch of other things going on in your body. So snoring is not a good, is, is an indicator that something else could be going on in your body. So either the first thing you can look at is mouth tape and sounds barbaric, but basically you're covering your mouth as long as you don't have any um, sinus issues. And then that can, like for me, for some reason, when I go to sleep, I don't have sinus issues with my mouth hanging open. So the mouth tape helps to stop the snoring and uh, definitely look at the, the episode. We go into a lot more detail on this on the healthy sleep with Dr. Mark Brehenna. And uh, he's, he's, um, he talks, he's a biological dentist talking about sleep happiness. So definitely if you, you, you or your partner are snoring, look at snore lab, and then you can track that. Um, and also as far as things to look at for that sleep routine, you want to make sure that you have a dark room, that you're, you're hiding all those electronic lights. If you have a TV or any kind of electronics in your, your room, you're hiding the light because even those little lights can interfere with our sleep. Consider a sleep mask. It's taken me years to, uh, use a sleep mask only the last couple years I've used it. And I can't believe I went my whole life without it because it just adds that extra layer of cocooning and, and darkness. And also uh, taking your technology out of the room. Um, a lot of us have our phone on our bedside table. First of all, putting that on flight mode because the EMFs, the electromagnetic frequency from your phone is going right into your head. So you want to make sure you remove that. Um, you can put it on flight mode or put that towards um, even having it charge outside of your room. If you're thinking I can't do that, you know, because I need, need it for my alarm clock, then you can you can have it on flight and um, use use the alarm there. And also many people are using having the phone and you're, you're looking at the phone last thing at night and first thing in the morning, which then is a whole other thing that's disrupting your your sleep. So consider, well, I highly recommend getting, taking the phone out of your bedroom and putting it on flight mode. Um, and then basically the the room, your, your bedroom should be used for sleep and intimacy only. You want to take the clutter out of there. If you're, if you happen to work in there, being able to somehow close it down so you're not looking at it and just having the room for sleep and intimacy. Anything you want to say there, Justine? Yeah. And so, you know, you talked about, um, limiting technology in the bedroom, even, you know, I, I know it sounds like a hard thing to do, but removing the television is a really good thing. Right. And so, um, in an ideal situation, we would literally have a bed in our clothes 
and that would be it in our bedrooms because we really do want that space to be for our bodies to know that when we go into this room, like it's a cue, right? Um, just like for kids, it's a cue that this is that this is the place where we sleep. This is the place where we wind down. Um, and as you said that, Sarah, it just occurred to me for the first time. You know, one of the you know as we sort of sort through who works where in my home with the mm-hmm. kids in the house, as one of the options we considered, we have a relatively large bedroom. We considered uh, putting my desk in there and having that be my workspace. And it just occurred to me now as you were talking that had I done that, that would have really made it challenging for me to ever actually get into the right relaxation mode when I went into to the bedroom at night to go to bed because my desk would be there. It would it would sort of turn me on, right? Mm-hmm. It would be the like, oh, there goes the light switch. I'm, I'm on now. I'm back at work. And, there, and my mind would be back at work even though I knew it was time to go to sleep. So it's really important as much as we can to to stack the deck in our favor to, to have good sleep. Um, and by doing that, um, you know, the, like the technology and all of the lights and stuff, any light that produces any kind of, any kind of blue light, we see it not only with our eyes, but also we absorb some of it through our skin and any amount of that tells our melatonin to go down. Our melatonin is our sleep hormone. Any amount of that that's in the room really works against us. Like you said, even those tiny little lights, it's not a lot. It's maybe not a lot, not too much to bother our eyes, but our body is still perceiving it and it's perceiving it all night long. And all night long, it's it's sort of telling your body signals like, because our bodies are, are, again, are sort of dumb, primitive creatures, right? So our bodies think any amount of light is sunlight. Our bodies don't recognize artificial lights as anything but sunlight. And so it's constantly sort of keeping us in this stage of not deep sleep because it wants us to be alert because it's it's thinking like the sun is coming up or something of that nature. Any exposure to that, to those lights really does interfere with our hormone melatonin and really does make it challenging for us to either fall asleep or to stay asleep or to get deep sleep, even if we do fall asleep and stay asleep. And melatonin production is important for both male and female fertility with sperm health, with the, with the menstrual cycle. Definitely check out the impact of blue and green light on um, and why it's important for trying to conceive that episode. You can check that out. So look for why blue light is important if you're trying to conceive check out that podcast episode. Definitely the caffeine, not having caffeine after 12. So nothing stimulating before bed, nothing such as having right before bed, eating, exercise, TV, work. You really don't want to be stimulated before you're going to bed. And what about melatonin? This is a thing we see all the time, people potentially supplementing. I know in some of the the trying to conceive books, it's recommended to supplement with melatonin to improve the success of IVF. What's your take on supplementing with melatonin, Justine? Yeah. So melatonin, you know, the purpose of melatonin really is just to help us sleep. Melatonin is our sleep hormone. It's the signal that tells our body it's safe. It's time to go to sleep now. It's time to wind down. It's the opposite of cortisol. So if you were to look at at cortisol and melatonin on a graph, or on a, like a timeline for the day. When cortisol is rising, melatonin is lowering and, and vice versa. So they're complete opposites. And so in general, you know, you're talking about nothing stimulating before bed, right? So food is stimulating, exercise is stimulating, TV is stimulating, a deep conversation with your partner can be stimulating, thinking about work can be stimulating or actually working can be stimulating. So all of those things tend to drive up cortisol, which is the opposite of melatonin. And so melatonin, my guess is that the reason melatonin is actually useful, so there's sort of two reasons and and increases your chances of success with IVF. So one is just that straight up, it gives you the sleep hormone and it helps you sleep better. And we know that when you get better quality sleep, you are healthier and the healthier person is always going to have better success with IVF, period. The other thing is melatonin is a really powerful antioxidant. And so it actually helps us do a little bit of detox work. It actually helps your body a little bit in that way. So there are sort of multiple benefits going on with melatonin. That being said, you know, with any supplement, that's always true. You know, it's really specific to the unique individual, right? And so melatonin, is not right for everyone. Um, and so it really sort of matters that you're that you're doing all the other things. And again, you know, we talk about supplements. We love supplements. They really are a critical part of our program, but they're no good if you're not also eating a healthy diet and getting doing the right sleep habits and getting daily exercise and all of those things. Otherwise, the supplements alone are never going to get us where we need to be. So I always like to caution, you know, to, to throw that out there when we talk about supplements, because no supplement is ever the magic bullet. You have to do the work on the other stuff too for the supplements to actually have a, a useful enough effect. Yeah, it can be a band-aid approach. And basically, you know, why is your melatonin low to begin with? Well, what else is going on in the body? And so just blindly supplementing, which then can imp- impact your body's ability to, to produce melatonin, you know, is that the right, the right approach? 
We, th- we, th- we, we think it's not. Anything else you wanted to say around with some of the supplements that can help or essential oils around with, with sleep? Yeah, you know, just there's lots of options out there, right? And so sleep is so important that if you are struggling with sleep in any way, you know, there are lots of aids out there that help us sleep and some are better than others. You know, there are things out there. So melatonin is one of them for sure. We have GABA. We have something called Serifos, which actually helps to lower cortisol, which then allows melatonin to climb up. There are some essential oils that are calming. And there are lots of other things out there that are sort of building blocks for your body to produce its own melatonin or things that contain melatonin. So like tart cherry juice contains natural melatonin. And so, you know, all of these things can help with sleep. And for that reason, you know, again, you know, all of these are sort of band-aid approaches, right? So if you are low in melatonin, it's always back to why are you low in melatonin? And is it, is it a resource thing? Your body didn't have enough vitamins and minerals to make melatonin. But ultimately we want to ask that question. But in the meantime, getting good sleep is so important that if you are struggling to get the sleep, I am always a fan of doing doing whatever it is we need, as long as it's not a detriment to you to help bridge that gap, right? To give you some relief in the short term so that you can get enough sleep, so that you can get the rest you need, so that you have the energy and that you have that other resource there available to you to help implement, you know, the hard diet changes that might be necessary or whatever else might be necessary to sort of, you know, to really cross that bridge and to get yourself in tip top shape so that your reproductive system is really just sort of humming along. Um, and so there are lots of good essential oils out there. Um, lavender and peppermint are, are ones that come up sometimes. Um, I know, you know, there's, there are sleepy time teas out there. Um, a lot of things that include chamomile and lavender and things like that. Anything out there like that that works for you or um, magnesium, for example, that's mm-hmm. another one. Magnesium is a calming mineral. Um, and for some people that really has a pretty dramatic effect in allowing them to calm down so that they can fall asleep at night. You know, any of those things, I'm a fan of, of using them for a little while, right? It's not something we want to do forever. Ultimately, we want to find out why, you know, why is your sleep disturbed? Why did you need those things to begin with? But in the short term, absolutely, those things can be a, a major help. Yeah, I use magnesium cream on my feet before bed because it helps it, it easily absorb in the system. I like ancient minerals for that. And what about, so just our last thing here. So a lot of our, as part of our couples coaching program, we have testing and some of the testing. One of the tests we do is stool testing, which looks for parasites, bacteria, fungal infections, and more. And basically gut bugs are more active at night. And so that could be disrupting your sleep. Can you talk briefly about that? Yeah. You know, and we see this all the time, right? When we run a hormone test, we see mm-hmm. that, um, you know, for folks that tend to have some microbiome issues, things we call gut bugs, they tend to have an elevated nighttime cortisol. And and sometimes we'll run that cortisol panel first and we'll go like, well, it looks like maybe gut bugs could be at play. And then inevitably we, we see that that's, that is what's going on when we run the, the gut test. Um, but ultimately, you know, they are nocturnal, whereas we are diurnal. We're supposed to be awake when it's sunlight. They're nocturnal. They're awake at night, you know, very much like any other nocturnal animal. And the same kind of thing, you know, of course, we know that there's a lot of other activity that happens during the full moon, for example. You know, so they sort of run on a different system. And when they're active, the gut bugs are really doing, you know, their, what they do. They're living their daily life. They produce toxins, you know, these unfriendly flora. They produce toxins that aren't good for us and as a byproduct, right? So it's these little gut bug farts and their farts are toxic and that creates a level of toxicity for our body and that's extra work for our body because now our body needs to sort of filter that out, right? So our liver is working, all of our detox pathways are working and we don't want them to be working at night, right? We don't want that to be happening. So the sun goes down, the gut bugs come out to play, they have these little toxic gut bug farts and now our body's under some stress. And when our stress goes up, so does our stress hormone cortisol. And so we see that. We see that when we run a test that, you know, we, we see, you know, you do a handful of different cortisol samples over the course of a day. And we see that nighttime one is elevated. And that really can have an effect on how well we sleep, right? Because again, like we talked about earlier, when cortisol rises, melatonin drops. And so if the gut bugs are active and they're causing some stress on your body, it's forcing your melatonin down. And so now your body, even though you may be tired, right? You had a long, hard day. You were your tail off and you climb into bed and you can't fall asleep. And it's because your hormones just aren't quite balanced. Your, your cortisol and your melatonin aren't quite balanced because those gut bugs are at play causing some, some additional stress on the body. Yeah. And really in summary, you can't out supplement a poor diet or poor sleep. So until next time, we will be talking about our next episode is on stress. So take care. As you know, today's episode is all about you taking action. So pick one thing that we just talked about and implement that tonight before you go to bed. So 
I wanted to give you a, another success story here. So we've got someone that came in to the program and she was, so she was 39. She had a pregnancy loss at 21 weeks. Her AMH was at 0.18. She had regular cycles about 25 to 28 days. She wasn't sure if she was ovulating. She had struggled with digestive issues, um, IBS. She has, she had lactose intolerance. She had interrupted sleep like we were just talking about. She had hypoglycemia, high stress. Her partner, his sperm analysis was normal, but he was also overweight, eating a lot of processed foods and sodas, and he had a very stressful job. So we uh, followed, she followed our fat fertile method, took action, and we addressed the food sensitivities, found out she had um, some non-celiac gluten sensitivity. For her, gluten was really off the charts and other foods that also were cross-reactors with that. Um, even sometimes people are doing uh, gluten-free grains and that can cause issues. So we really, really fine-tuned her diet. We balanced her hormones. She had uh, low progesterone and low testosterone. And she also, her cortisol was high in the, the, the morning. And we also balanced her blood sugar. So really using, using the testing that we do, we we're able to identify those healing op opportunities and dig deeper. She had a number of bacteria in her stool and she, was so we addressed the the bacterial overgrowth and also for her typically a lot of people we work with it's type A's busy professionals typically impatient and overthinking and a lot of people have may have triggers with m medical information so kind of like spiral down and Dr Google becomes becomes a crutch which is which is not helpful for uh, mental emotional stress and so we helped her uh, create boundaries around that and her partner lost a lot of weight uh, he was able to set boundaries and they as a couple actually had better communication. So within nine months in our program, she was pregnant naturally. So uh, the fab fertile method, which we just talked about, includes those functional tests, such as the food sensitivity testing, hormone testing, using urine, looking at stool testing. So the DNA, your stool, hair tissue, mineral analysis testing. So checking on your minerals, which are the spark plugs of the body. You could be eating that healthy diet, but you could be maybe not absorbing the nutrients. We see that regularly. And then we do a blood chemistry review. And that's for you and your partner, not to diagnose, but to educate educate what are the healing opportunities. And really, we look at this, we're looking at your health history, using the functional testing, looking at the blood chem review, and what are the healing opportunities. And all of this really tells a story. And then to fast track your success. And this is where our approach is different. We include a fertility coach for you to really help you get out of your own way. Because making these targeted diet and lifestyle changes, they, they can be simple, but not but not easy. So it is having someone who has, who is, has experienced infertility like you, but really knowing how to navigate this journey so you can navigate it on, you know, on your own terms. So that really helps you fast track the success. You're taking those targeted diet and lifestyle changes. You could be eating a, you know, you could be eating a diet that maybe it's it's not right, a fertility diet. Maybe that diet's not right for you. And like we talked about in this episode, if you've got issues with your sleep, and we see this all the time with the clients we work with, that is a, a clue to optimize your sleep. You, you really need to dig, dig into that. And that's a healing opportunity that to me going to IVF when you've got interrupted sleep issues, just it doesn't even make sense. So at the end of the program, you'll either be happily pregnant, or if you do need to go to the fertility clinic, you'll have dramatically improved your success because you have optimized your health. And it's not just you, you know, we're dealing with complex, tough cases like low AMH and premature ovarian insufficiency and failure, diminished ovarian reserve and helping people get pregnant naturally, or if they do need to go to the clinic, you know, helping them improve their, their success and typically tough cases where they've been told, sorry, donor eggs are for you. And we're helping them get pregnant naturally and then improving um, success with IVF with, with their own eggs. So it is almost 2021. Yeah, I can't believe it either. 2020 has been a little bit of a wild one. But if you are listening to this right now, I know you're ready to have your baby in 2021. And so it is time to take action and really taking that personalized approach to diet and lifestyle using testing, tests don't guess, and then having someone coach you and ha actually help you implement this stuff. Because life gets in the way you can have the best intentions just like if you, you you know you decide to join a gym and you're you know you're going to go every day but then you just don't make it so and you give up so that's why it's it's key to have someone to uh, to help you along the way you and your partner to help you make these changes so it is looking at the whole body and like we talked about today if your sleep is off that is a clue and it's time it's time to dig deeper so if you are ready to take a targeted customized functional approach to your fertility i invite you to book a free call you can go to fab fertile f a b fertile click on book a free call. This call is for you and your partner and space is limited. We have two spots left in December to work with us. So all you need to do is go to Fab Fertile, F-A-B Fertile, book a free call. 
Also, the link is in the show notes. So I look forward to speaking with you. Melatonin is important for female fertility. It helps regulate hormones and maintain the body's circadian rhythms. Plus, it helps determine the frequency and duration of the menstrual cycle. Plus, it impacts sperm count and motility. Blue and green light negatively impact our melatonin production. That's why we recommend blue blocks, blue and green light sleep classes to all our one to one clients. Simply go to blue blocks, B L U B L O X dot com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast at checkout to receive your 15% discount. That's blue blocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast. Hey there, I regularly speak with five to 10 couples per week who are struggling to have their baby. And although we want to help everyone, we only have two spots available per month to work with us. So the supercharger fertility discovery call is for action takers, really people who are ready to move forward so they can finally have their baby. And if you're not ready and you wait, the risk is you'll need to wait two to three months for a spot to open up. So if you're seriously considering working with us, go to fabfertile, F-A-B fertile.com and click on book a free call. Then you'll be all booked in and ready to spend 30 minutes to give you the action plan to getting pregnant naturally. That's fabfertile, F-A-B-Fertile.com and click on book a free call. I'm excited to offer you a special gift. If you are a U.S. resident, text FERTILE, F-E-R-T-I-L-E to 55444. You'll be prompted to enter your email address and you'll receive our fertility yoga download. In this 20 minute intro video, we focus on a calming and peaceful practice to connect back to our heart. These simple yoga poses can help quiet negative thoughts and make you feel more in control. Download it now and get started today. For US residents, text FERTILE, F-E-R-T-I-L-E to 55444. For non-US residents, go to Yoga Freebie, F-R-E-E-B-I-E to access your special gift. That's yogafreebie.com to access the free fertility yoga download. The Get Pregnant Naturally podcast, including show notes and links, provides information with respect to healthy living, nutrition, lab testing, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without representation or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.